I want to tell you a story. A few years ago, I was riding my very favorite Appaloosa, Joby, and we were running as fast as we could and it came time to turn a 90 degree corner onto another gravel road. Well, you can guess what happened. We went over on our side and bless his heart, he was such a trooper. Me and the horse slid for a good long ways before we picked ourselves up and limped on home. And by the time we got back to the barn, we both noticed we were covered in a lot of scrapes and bruises. I just wanna share in the next few minutes what helped both of us. This is such an incredible product. Stay with us because in the next few minutes, we're gonna talk about the benefits and blessings of having hydrogen peroxide in your pantry. I only want to recommend products to you that are going to be long lasting and where you're gonna get a whole lot of bang for your buck. I believe in a very simplified form of prepping in that you don't have just hordes and hordes of supplies that you may or may not ever use. So take me seriously when I recommend something and today I'm talking about hydrogen peroxide. What that is, if you're not familiar with it, you probably have it in your cabinet already in the bathroom. It's one of the simplest and cheapest uh, supplies that you can get, so that's wonderful. You can usually get almost a quart of it like this at the dollar store for even a dollar or less. So get yourself some if you don't have any already. You can get it in a 1% solution, which is almost too mild to use on a lot of things. You can get it in a 3% solution, which is most common in what you see here today and is the most safe for, for a multitude of uses. You can also get it up to 20% and even 35% food grade hydrogen peroxide is something you'll see on the shelves. Now, of course, you can always dilute it. So if you get that, that's great. Um, but I would just recommend for your family's safety and ease of use, the 3% is just about perfect. Now, let's get into just a couple of the hundreds of ways you can use this product. Um, first of all, it disinfects, but it disinfects in such a uh, gentle way that you're going to be able to use it on your children's scraped knees when they have a bike wreck outside. You'll be able to use it on your animals that might have gotten in a fight or some sort of scuffle where they have skin that has started to bleed. It will stop minor bleeding, but if you have a lot of blood coming out, this is not going to help. Uh, you really need to stop the bleeding before you use hydrogen peroxide on it. And also I have heard this, and I don't know how true it is, but I've heard that it's important for you to use really, if you're treating a wound, to only use it once because if you use it over and over, it will not only kill the bad bacteria, but it will start killing the good bacteria. So keep that in mind as you use it. But it's a very gentle disinfectant. You can use it not only on your body, but on your surfaces and products around the house. So just to get started, let's talk about maybe disinfecting our toothbrush which is great to do once a week or once a month, go ahead and just douse it in a little bit of 3% hydrogen peroxide. Um, it cleanses your any kind of makeup brushes that you use on your face so that they will be safe to use continually and not help facilitate more uh, bacteria that would get on your face. Um, it's also useful on surfaces. So whether you're in the bathroom or the kitchen or anywhere in the house, you can disinfect the surface just by wiping it down with a little bit of warm water and a few drops of hydrogen peroxide. It also cleans stainless steel and the fronts of your refrigerator and your appliances and things like that. Also in the kitchen, you'll find that it's perfect for disinfecting that sponge or dish rag that you've been using to wipe off the counters and dishes with. Also cutting board surfaces, you know how they get grooved just from the very first time you use a knife on them and you always wonder if you've got them disinfected or clean enough. Well, the simple thing that you need to do is just pour a little hydrogen peroxide over the surface of that and it will take any of that bad bacteria off your cutting board. Let me also say this, it's fantastic for cleaning vegetables. This doesn't replace the need for using apple cider vinegar to get that wax coating off of the outside of the cucumbers and other vegetables that you get at the store. But if you have gotten a non-GMO product that might have had chemicals sprayed on the outside of those fruits or vegetables, since this kind of is a detoxification of those, 
it's good to go ahead and wipe them down with this or soak them in it for about 20 minutes just a dilution of water and hydrogen peroxide and it's going to kind of um, take out any of those chemicals that have been sprayed on the outside this is what I've heard I am NOT a scientist to prove it but I do think it's worthwhile to try because you can't always get organic vegetables and fruits that haven't been sprayed with something so I love doing this to all of mine before I eat them you can use it on your toilets on your mirrors on the surfaces all throughout the house including the shower and even the shower curtain I love this it kills mold and mildew so all of that grimy uh, build up that you get in the shower and bathtub not only is it going to disinfect but it's going to get rid of all the mildew that would grow even like on your shower curtain this is the perfect thing to treat it with so it kills mold if you've got some place in your house that has not been attended to that might have had some water get in and started a little bit of mold growing you know that you can also treat that with apple cider vinegar but this uh, hydrogen peroxide is perfect for treating that it's so interesting that this can do this many things. Let me just say what, what is happening here. Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. We know that water is H2O, so really all this is is just one extra little oxygen atom that is attached to it. That's making all the difference. Now, it is a rather unstable uh, connection, so if you leave the lid off, just know that, yes, it's going to eventually turn back into water. In fact, let me say this right now. If you need to test if this is good or not, um, keep in mind that you can always just pour a little down the sink and listen for that fizz. And when that happens, you know, okay, it's still a good product. It hasn't turned into water. But once you open it and break the seal, you're going to, um, you're going to have a nice little metal seal on here when you get it initially but once you break that seal it's only got about a six month shelf life so be prepared and it might even be a good idea to mark right on there the date that you opened it or the date that you need to use it by once you've broken that seal so you know that you've got a time limit before you can use the product also when you purchase it I would say this reach to the very back of the shelf and get the best bottle that has the longest, furthest out um, date because it's going to have an expiration date that might be hard to read but find it on there somewhere. The expiration date should really be about three years out. That's as long as hydrogen peroxide can hold on in these nice dark uh, plastic, generally plastic bottles that you're going to get it in. So look for the very farthest out date because three years is really as long as you can expect from it. Let me tell you about a really quick and super easy way to make a homemade version of OxyClean. We all know how wonderful that product is, but OxyClean is going to be perfect for treating anything that has kind of a protein in it. So cat urine, bloods, wine stains, anything like that in both your upholstery or your carpet or your clothing this is going to treat and the way I make it is with one cup of water, one cup of baking soda, and one cup of hydrogen peroxide. You'll stir those together and I'll put that recipe down below but I will say this a lot of people make it with two cups of water so I'll leave it up to you. I just like mine as strong as I can get it and it seems to work great with just an equal parts of one, one, and one water, hydrogen peroxide, and baking soda. You stir that up really good and then you just treat whatever stain you've got on the clothing. Let it sit for about 15 minutes and then launder it. Keep in mind this is also good at bleaching things so you don't want to let it set overnight before you get to doing the laundry. Also, if you have a washing machine or dishwasher where you've got one of those rubber gaskets around the door that get kind of moldy and mildewy, well, just run some of this through the next batch and you'll be amazed at how that can take care of that quick as a wink. Now, let's talk about a few things that you would do with it on your body and for health and beauty. I love this. You probably remember back as a teenager when you might have bleached your hair with this because it does bleach your hair. It also is fantastic for bleaching your nails just by soaking them in some hydrogen peroxide if they've gotten all kind of yellowed this will bring them back to a nice white and pink color it also is great for 
uh, a debriding agent or a agent to um, make your teeth white. So it's going to kill the bacteria in your mouth. So not only can you wash your toothbrush with it, like I said earlier, to disinfect it, you can also gargle with it. If you have a sore throat, you can use it as a mouthwash. You can put it in a toothpaste, which incidentally, the toothpaste is just made with hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, and a little bit of essential oil like peppermint or something like that. You might put a little stevia in it. I like a little stevia in mine. But that makes a perfect toothpaste that's also whitening for your teeth. It's useful for detoxing. So you can use it on your skin like a toner. It's fantastic for acne and eczema and any kind of boils that you might have on your skin, whiteheads, blackheads. This is perfect for treating them in a mild and gentle way to get any of that bad bacteria out. It's just a fantastic product all the way around. It freshens your breath, which is wonderful. And people say that it freshens it for a whole 24 hours. I don't believe that, but you can test it and see for yourself if it does. Um, it also is fantastic if you have either an ear infection or a sinus infection or just clogged up ears. You can put a few drops in your ears and let it set and then wash it out with warm water and that'll get all the earwax loose, which is fantastic. It also gets all that bad bacteria out. So if you have an ear infection, it's fantastic for clearing that. Some people like to put it in their humidifier when they're sick so that they're breathing in that little extra atom of oxygen and it helps clear out the bacteria of their sickness. Some people even make a spray sort of like nasalide that they squirt up their nose. I have never tried that and I am not a doctor so I'm not recommending that but there are folks that do it and say that it's amazing for them. Um, it also cures athlete's foot and any kind of fungus that you have grow anywhere on your body. Like athlete's foot, it takes care of it in a beautiful way. It also helps with inflammation. Just like on your skin with that eczema that I mentioned, it takes and um, reduces the size of pores and it pulls in, kind of constricts the blood vessels just a little bit. So if there's any kind of feminine itching or hemorrhoids that you have, this is fantastic for treating those as well. Now, I haven't even touched on all the ways that you can use this on your body and in your home. I want us to now go out to the garden and use it in a couple of ways that are just incredible. So stay with us for that. But keep in mind that I am not a doctor or a scientist. So if you need to see a professional to get advice that is important to verify, please see a professional. Don't just take my word for it. Do your research and talk to people who are very much in the know with all the scientific data behind them. It's almost spring here and to get the seeds started, one of the most common things a lot of us do is go ahead and tuck a few seeds in a wet paper towel that's folded over in a nice little plastic bag and lay it on our windowsill. You probably did this in grade school if you don't do it now as an adult but it gives them a kickstart. And yet if you remember so many times the seeds get a little bit moldy before they sprout or they might sprout but have mold growing on them at the same time and you have to throw out some of them. Well, if you'll put just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in there with it, you're going to notice that it takes care of any bit of that and they seem to sprout quickly. Now this is part of the miracle. When uh, rain passes through the ozone, it sometimes, not always, but sometimes picks up an extra atom of, of uh, oxygen. So what happens when it falls to the earth is kind of a loose version of hydrogen peroxide. That's why rainwater is so fantastic for helping your garden grow better than any chlorinated water that comes from your spigot from the city supply. So if you need to replicate as close to rainwater as possible, you might go ahead and put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in with the water that you're watering your plants in the garden with. Not only is it going to take care of any mold or mildew that might be growing, but also it's going to kind of replicate that rainwater and give them a boost that helps them grow faster and get started faster. Isn't that amazing? Okay. 
I'll stop. You've heard a whole lot of good reasons, but there are probably a hundred more I haven't mentioned. So will you take the time to share how you use hydrogen peroxide in your home or around your homestead? I would love to hear how you're using it. I'll see you again next week. And until then, will you take the time to subscribe and hit that bell and share this with someone you love, but go out and intentionally make it a point to be a blessing to someone today. If you find scripture offensive, you're more than welcome to leave the video now. But for the rest of you, I have this beautiful blessing that's available to us at the end of the book of Romans, chapter 16. The very last words Paul wrote were this, Now to him who is able to strengthen you, according to my gospel and the preachings of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that has been kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen.